So now something else which is really great when we're all together is listening to the scripture. So we're going to have our reading. Today's reading is from Galatians 5, 22 to 26 in the NIV. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its pleasures and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. 
Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Amen. Thank you for that reading. Now Fran is going to come and speak to us um, about the Galatians and the fruits of the Spirit. Over to you, Fran. Good afternoon, everyone, and, um, and a warm welcome to um, our St. Margaret's Community Church. And uh, for those of you who are tuning in maybe for the first time, or maybe you've been watching um, our online service over the last um, three and a half months, um, you probably haven't seen me in here. That's because um, of lockdown. That's because our, our churches have been closed uh, for public worship. And because I am, um, I'm not ordained, I'm not a trained reader, I'm just a lay, um, a lay minister here at the Church of England, um, I have not been allowed to, to come and preach from the church. But um, things have changed and um, here I am and I just feel really excited. I feel like it's a real privilege for me to be here. I'm on my own. Uh, we're just about to start a uh, phase one of a new building project here where we're going to put some heating in and it's really exciting. But I just feel so excited to be in God's house and, and preaching God's word to us, to you all. So um, I really hope that you're going to be blessed by, by what God has placed on my heart. And if, as, as you know, we've been in a series of um, looking at the fruits of the Spirit. And our heart here at St. Margaret's is that, is that by the help of the Holy Spirit, that we will be filled and transformed. And what happens when the Holy Spirit fills us is, is that is there's an outpouring. You know, we can't contain it. And we, we outpour God's love. God's peace, God's joy, God's kindness, God's goodness, God's faithfulness. And they are, they are the fruits, some of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that I believe that God wants to, to um, help us grow in as a church family. And so here we are, and today I, I've just had the real privilege of speaking to you on, on, the, on the character, the the fruit of the Spirit, which is goodness, the goodness of God. And I love the way in, in that Galatians verse that it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It talks about the fruit. And if, if it's a fruit, it needs to grow. It needs to develop. It needs to mature. And that maturity happens in us. Then the fruit of the Spirit is, is the spontaneous work of the Holy Spirit in, in us, in and through us. It's the Holy Spirit that produces these character traits. And what's amazing about these character traits is, is that they are found in the very nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. How about that? These fruits of the Spirit, which are found in the nature of Christ, God, through his Holy Spirit, wants to give us these. Give us these fruits. Give us these gifts. He wants to grow them in us, in his church. And... You know, we can't obtain them by trying to get them without trying to get them without without God's help. If we want the fruit of the Spirit to grow and blossom within us, we must join in with God. We must join in with God. I love it. In John 15, verses 4 and 5, it says this. You know, if, we, if we're going to want these fruits of the Spirit, you know, we can't get them for being good. They're, they're a gift from God. John 15, 
verses 4 and 5 says this. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Isn't that just beautiful? About that picture that Jesus gives us about the vine, about bearing fruit. And if we're not in Christ, we can do nothing. And here, us at St Margaret's, we have, we, we have been planted. We were planted from St Jude's in South Sea. And like anything that is, is planted, you know, when you plant a seed or a bulb, you have to take care of it. You have to nurture it. You have to water it. But there is an expectation, isn't there? There's an expectation that when you plant something, it has to grow. It has to flourish. And, you know, I, I really enjoy gardening. But if I'm, if I'm really honest with you guys and myself, I'm not... A great gardener. I'm not a great gardener. And I'm sure the lovely Sylvia would, um, <laughs> you just ask her, she will tell you, in fact. She's always telling me off, especially when I uh, have a go at the garden um, at St. Margaret's, when I get my, my power tools out and I chop it all back. Um, I am not a gardener. You know, Sylvia is a gardener. You know, she knows the names of the, of the plants. She knows the type, of, the, 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 the type of month you have to cut it back. She knows, yeah, she knows all about gardens. I know nothing. But I can get my hedge cutter and I can strim her and I can go and I can go and hack back. I love that metaphor, though, of us growing in Christ. I, and I love the verse in John 15, verse 4. No branch can bear fruit on its own. <laughs> we all need each other. We all need, I need Sylvia. You know, when I, when I say, should we go into the garden? And, and she, she's like, horror. <laughs> but I need Sylvia to help me do the garden, to make sure that I'm doing it right and I'm doing it well. We can't do things on our own. As a body of Christ, we have to do things together. As followers of Jesus, as a family, which I truly believe we are, we are never independent. The body of Christ. The church functions only when the family members work together for the common good, for the gospel. You know, do you, need, do you know someone who needs help? Do you know someone who needs maybe a bit of gentle correction? Do you know someone who needs encouragement? Humbly, and gently reach out to them. You know, when I talk to people who have encountered the Holy Spirit for the first time, who are filled with the gifts, the fruits of the Spirit for the first time, they often, they often say the same things. They often talk about being saved. No one ever talks about when you encounter the Holy Spirit of being um, scared or frightened. You know, God is good. His goodness 
is for you. And when God fills you with his Holy Spirit, that is safe and that is good. People talk about the goodness they feel when they're filled with the Holy Spirit. People often talk when they're filled with the Holy Spirit of being at peace. You know, even if, even if they don't believe in God, nearly every person has said something really significant and special has happened to me. I can't explain it. I can't explain that feeling, that fuzzy feeling, that warm sensation, that sense of peace. They, they, can't, they can't tell me, they can't tell others it was God, but they say they cannot deny it was something special. And of course we know if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that is God. That is God coming close. They are encountering the love of Christ. I remember praying for somebody at the community cafe who had a frozen shoulder. You know, and I prayed a really simple prayer. And he opened his eyes and he had a tear in his eye. And he looked at me and he said, thank you. He said, I'm not sure what happened there, but I felt a warm sensation on my shoulder. That was the presence of God. I would love to talk to you today about God's goodness, about how good God is. I don't know about you guys, but the word good seems to have been kind of replaced. It's almost like it's not, it's not good enough. Um, it's been replaced with more dramatic words like um, awesome. You know, we all say, oh, I'm, I'm always saying, oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's fabulous. That's incredible. You know, but God doesn't use words like that. God uses the word good. The word good. And there is nothing wrong with awesome, incredible, amazing. They're fantastic. But it's God uses the word good. And the thing we can't walk away from is that the Bible doesn't just say God does good things. It says that God is, in fact, good. It's not just what he does. It's who he is. It's who he is. And who he is is never, is never he never changes and in Psalm 46, the psalmist says this, God is our refuge and strength, a present help in times of trouble. God is always good. Right at the very start of creation, Genesis 1, Verse 31, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. It wasn't awesome, it wasn't incredible, it was very good. I looked up a quote from Anne Frank and she said this, human greatness does not lie in wealth or power, but in the character and goodness. People are just people, and all people have faults, shortcomings, but all of us are born with a basic goodness. I love that. 
and we are wired as followers of Christ to share God's goodness. You know, that's why I love being part of St. Margaret's Community Church. That's why I love being part of this family. I love serving at the food bank because we have such a mixture of, of volunteers. Some have faith, some have no faith. And often while we are serving, while we are packing bags, while we are receiving donations, we have some amazing conversations good conversations and one key thing that people the volunteers share with me is that they feel good in themselves because they are giving something back they are giving back to their community and just on wednesday i was chatting to two of the volunteers and you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm believing and praying, and please join me, I'm praying for, for many of those volunteers to come and encounter Christ through his spirit, to experience the goodness of God. And they, they both were sharing with me at different times just how much, um, by serving at the food bank, has impacted their life. You know, it's been a lifeline to them in, in, in one of the volunteers' uh, own words. They've been furloughed for the last three months, and without the food bank, their mental health would have spiralled out of control. They are so grateful that they can help in some way. And we are, help, we are so grateful that, we'll, that they can come alongside us and that we can share God's goodness with them. Let me finish with this story. Um, on the whiteboard, um, just outside the 24-7 prayer room, somebody um, had written, God is always good. And a few weeks ago, I was showing a gas engineer around the church and um, showing him around, and he was like, yeah, he's, he's amazed. And he, he challenged me, he said, do you believe that? Do you believe? And I was like, believe what? believe that no perfect people allowed and he's like no do you believe that god is always good and i was like i was i kind of stopped and i kind of paused smiled at him and said i believe i believe with all my heart and all my soul that god is always good and i, and I shared with him i said even even when I've really struggled. And believe me, I've had some real, real tough times in my life. I felt broken and I felt left out, let down. But I still believe in my heart and with my soul that yes, indeed, God is always good. God is always good. I just want to end, just as I was preparing for this talk, I just felt God was uh, wanting to, just God to place something on my heart, so I'm just going to share it with you. And it, it may be relevant, and it may not. But I just felt that God was saying to me, that as, as I was preparing, talking about just how good God is, and about being filled with his Spirit, there could be someone here who feels that they're just not good enough for God. Is that you? If that's you, I want to, to reassure you that you are good enough. That God loves you. And God has placed this verse on my heart for you. And if that's you, why don't you close your eyes while I read this verse to you. It's in Romans 8, and it says this, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law and sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his son 
in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he commended sin in the flesh in order, sorry, commanded sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. God loves you. Let me just pray. I pray, Holy Spirit, come. Be with us now. Come and fill us afresh. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the fruit of goodness. And I pray, Lord, if that word is for anyone listening now, that that would be sealed in their heart, that they would know how much you love them, how much you care for them. Where they feel broken, Lord, you see goodness. Where they feel anxious, would you fill them with peace? And we pray for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Fran. Uh, As always, it's good to hear you speak about these things and speaking from the heart. So now we're going to uh, think about those things that Fran's been talking and go into another short period of worship.
wonderful to hear those songs uh, all through the service that we've had today. So that brings our service to a close. So just a couple of notices. Um, the food bank will be uh, available this week and the times will appear to my left just here. Paul's got a short message uh, to bring us with a video about the parish giving scheme. So that'll just play now. So good afternoon everyone. And for those that don't know me, my name's Paul and I've been asked to say a few words, ask the treasurer of St. Margaret's. So I'm gonna start by um, setting out what I see as the key responsibilities that I have. And firstly, it's to make sure that we are being wise with the financial resources that God has given to us um, to undertake our work in the parish of sharing God's love um, in, in lots of ways that many of you will be familiar with and support. And secondly, it's also to make sure that we're abiding by the law as a charity, as we are now registered as a charity. It's to make sure that we do things that are legal under the charity law. And of course, we would say that if we're doing the first responsibility, being wise with God's resources, then it's only natural that we would also be being lawful um, in what we do. I'm also responsible for making sure that we budget properly, which means that our income and our expenditure work in such a way that we can afford to do what we set out to do both now and in the future. Of course, income is very much dependent on voluntary giving, and it's something that the Bible talks about in terms of challenging uh, each one of us to give to the work of the church. Um, but I'm not here to give a sermon on giving, but what I can do is let you know how you're able to give um, to the work of St. Margaret's. It is possible to give a uh, one-off donation, either through the website or on a Sunday at the collection when we do meet together. But the best way of giving to the church is through regular giving. And, and we use, like many other churches up and down the country, something called the Parish Giving Scheme. Um, I'm going to show you a short video um, in a moment which explains what the Parish Giving Scheme is about. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll say a few words at the other end about how that works for us. The Parish Giving Scheme, or PGS for short, is a simple and easy way for you to support your local church. Using a professional donation management system, PGS offers a secure way for your church to receive gifts and gift aid on a regular basis. So how does it work? Honouring the First Fruits Principle, gifts are sent to the PGS on the first of the month via direct debit. The gift is then forwarded to your church by the 10th of the month and any eligible gift aid is sent separately once received from HMRC. You can make changes to your giving whenever you want, simply by contacting the PGS support team. You can also choose to have your gift automatically increase each year in line with inflation. PGS helps reduce the burden on our church volunteers, provides a professional service to its givers, and most importantly, helps parishes fund their mission and ministry. PGS, the better way to encourage giving in your church. So I hope that video is useful in explaining PGS to you. But if you've got any questions, uh, their website is parishgiving.org.uk or drop me an email at paul.nelson at stmagscc.uk. I'm happy to address any concerns that you might have. In the meantime, if you do wish to give to the via the Parish Giving Scheme, uh, there's two numbers that you'll need. Uh, one is the telephone number to call for Parish Giving Scheme, um, but also something that's the parish code, which makes sure that your giving goes to the right church. And both of those numbers are at the bottom of the screen uh, as I speak. So I hope that's been useful. If you've got any questions, do drop me an email or contact me through the church office. And I look forward to uh, seeing you all soon. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Uh, and the next video segment is about the prayer course, which is on Monday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Highly recommended, really good course. So here's, the, here's a short video about that one.
Hello, it's um, Editing Andrew here. We just have a late notice that uh, I've only just noticed because I didn't have notifications set on my phone. So, sorry about that. Uh, it's a very important notice and it's about our next session of 24 hour prayer. So we can do this in the building, one at a time obviously, or if you're not comfortable with that or not able to make it, you can have a slot to, um, to pray at home. It's really good. It's gonna be next Friday to Saturday. So Friday the 17th to Saturday the 18th. It's going from eight o'clock in the morning to the following eight o'clock in the morning so for 24 hours and as is usual claire uh, will email out the slots to people but if you'd like to be involved just send us a message and uh, we can give you a slot okay thank you thank you so that brings us to a close so i'd just like to thank um frankie for putting all this together and for all the work that uh, the band do and everybody who's behind making these videos work, uh, it's, it's quite an operation. They do such a fantastic job. I uh, hope you've enjoyed and been touched by what uh, we've said. If there's anything that's come out of this service that you'd like to talk to somebody about, uh, please contact us through the usual social medias and emails. The email address will appear just here next to me. Um, we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to pray for you and with you. So we hope you all stay safe. See you next week.